Hello everyone, my name is Jim Kim. I'm a group leader for Lab 1. I'll be talking about the vapor compression refrigeration experiment and also known as the heat pump experiment. Here's a quick overview of what I'll be talking about today. I'll be going over the objectives of the experiment, going a little bit into the background of the experiment, uh, the apparatus used, the experiments to be formed. There's a few that we have to do and then the conclusion and questions. Uh, the objective of this experiment is basically we're trying to analyze the performance of a heat pump and then also in doing so we want to uh, measure the coefficient of performance of our system or heat pump and then uh, lastly we want to describe uh, the cycle in a pH diagram. Um, here's two pictures of what I'll do to explain the background of the experiment. Uh, basically, the picture on the on my right, your your left, you can see that uh, we have a system and it has four main components. We have the evaporator down here, our compressor, our condenser, then our expansion valve. Um, the easiest, or one of the ways that I kind of understood this process is through this pH diagram. Um, for the ideal case. So for the evaporator, we have a uh, constant pressure that goes through the evaporator and it's from a low temperature working fluid and it comes out, or it should come out as a, a high te higher temperature, but in the ideal case, I believe it will be the same temperature. And then uh, the working fluid goes through the compressor. Um, here it is taken from a low pressure low temperature to a higher pressure, higher temperature, uh, and then through the condenser, heat is uh, released to the system, and from this higher temperature, higher pressure, it uh, brings it back to a, uh, excuse me, yeah, brings it back to a pressure, higher, higher pressure to a lower temperature. And then through the expansion valve, um, there will be a pressure drop, and so uh, it will go from a higher pressure to a lower pressure, and also uh, decreasing the temperature. Uh, further, more on the background, um, we have to know about the coefficient of performance. That's basically the ratio of what we want over what we put in, in the experiment. Um, what we want is uh, QL or heat loss and then what we put in is the work. Uh, this is a picture of the apparatus that we will be using. It's kind of complicated and has many components. Um, I put in bold the main components here. Um, just to go through it real quick, we have a compressor, uh, we have a condenser right there, our evaporator, our water reservoir which holds all our water. Uh, we have two pumps that will pump water to the evaporator and the condenser. Uh, we have a couple of manometers, uh, expansion valve, uh, water flow sensors, coolant flow sensors, we have some temperature sensors and cooling pressure sensors. Um, the working fluid that we'll be using today is R134A. And then here is a, a better picture of the whole cycle. Um, I think it's a better picture because you can kind of see uh, what the main components are in the system and how the working fluid or the water moves throughout the system. Also you can see where the sensors are located uh, better in this picture. You can see that we have sensors in the inlet and outlets of our main components and the sensors will measure temperature or pressure and things of that nature. We have two tests that need to be performed. Test one is we're going to determine the inlet power, the heat produced, and then the COP, like I mentioned. Um, there's a process that we have to follow. It's pretty straightforward. Um, I won't go too much into that. But uh, once we follow that process, the main thing to note is the flow rate is 5 liters per minute. Um, the compressor is set to approximately 40%. And then once we run the test, uh, we need to, or before we run the test, excuse me, we have to make sure the system becomes stable. Um, and then 
Once we do that, we'll be able to obtain these values right here. Uh, for our COP, we should get around a range. I estimated around four. That's kind of what um, it says in the textbook for a moderate temperature range. And so uh, it should be around three or four uh, in this experiment. Uh, test two, um, this one is same similar process as in test one, but the thing we'll be doing is comparing our data that we get to a pH diagram, or our ideal pH diagram, and then we'll be changing the flow rates to three different sets. The first one, three liters per minute, four and a half liters per minute, and six liters per minute. Also, the important thing to note here is that we have to make two assumptions. Uh, I believe we're making these assumptions in order for our experiments to be a little bit easier or even to make our calculations a little bit easier. Uh, first assumption we'll make is that pressure drop at the condenser is not important. So if you remember the picture from the uh, ideal Uh, the ideal case, we see that the, from the concessor 2 to 3, there is no pressure change. Uh, and also, uh, from state 3 to 4, which is through the expansion valve, um, we are going to assume that it's adiabatic. Uh, through the first law, uh, we have our simple form of energy in, plus the heat in equals the energy out, plus the work out. Uh, we're assuming that it's adiabatic, so for the heat, we can cancel that out, equal it to zero, saying that heat is not generated or there is no heat loss. And so through that, uh, we then have energy in equals energy out plus the work. Through the expansion valve, uh, there is no work being done, so we can cancel that out. And so we have energy in equals energy out, and then uh, the, I believe the change in energy, you can relate that to enthalpies, and so that's why we have enthalpy in, it will result in enthalpy in equals enthalpy out. Uh, these are a few parameters that we'll be uh, taking down through the test procedure too. Um, it's just the temperature and the pressures at the inlets and outlets. Uh, comparing the results to an ideal pH diagram, this is what the ideal pH diagram looks like. And this is just a table of what I found online that what uh, the pH diagram should look like for R134A. Um, as you can see, it's uh, slightly different, but uh, kind of the same idea. And so, um, in the sake of time, I will back over that right now. So for possible errors, uh, possible errors could arise if we have um, a limited time to, for the system to stabilize. And so what I mean by that is the system requires uh, time for it to reach a certain stabilization. And if we don't give the system enough time to stabilize, then that could uh, raise some errors in our calculations. Also, uh, errors in the sensors or measurement. Um, if the sensors or any of the devices were set up incorrectly, that could lead to some errors also. And another thing that I thought of maybe was uh, the surrounding temperature. If there are uh, extreme temperatures inside the lab, then that could also affect our uh, calculations. Occlusion, heat pumps, and refrigerators are a major component in many processes and appliances today. Um, one thing to note is R134A is not used in today's system. It has been outlawed due to the destruction of ozone. And for my research, I kind of found this uh, link from the EPA website. And this is, oh. Well, it basically was a website, a table showing what is the substitute for uh, the refrigerants that uh, are used today, but it's not working. Here are my references. Uh, any questions?
nine minutes? Uh, yeah, it's like ten minutes. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. There's a lot of information. <laughs> <laughs> you lost so many points, it's not even funny. But what, they tell you they lose 20 points for every 20 seconds? 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. Why? You gotta learn to watch your time. But practice. Yes, sir. We're not just saying six minutes for the sake of six minutes. Okay, next speaker.